this is the culmination of three very long weeks for our community. For the first night in 19 days, residents of Austin will rest a little easier. The man believed to be responsible for terrorizing their city is now dead. Investigators say they were able to zero in on the suspect, 23-year-old Mark Anthony Condit, before dawn today. We ultimately located the vehicle that this suspect was known to be driving, and in fact, we found that at a hotel right up the road here in Round Rock. As they were quickly to set up a perimeter and assemble a SWAT team from the Austin Police Department, Condit actually exited the hotel, got into the vehicle, and drove away. Quietly, police began to pursue the vehicle. The vehicle ended up stopping in the bar ditch on the side of the road behind us. As members of the Austin Police Department SWAT team approached the vehicle, the suspect detonated a bomb inside the vehicle, knocking one of our SWAT officers back, and one of our SWAT officers fired at the suspect as well. A massive explosion knocks them backwards, blows out all the windows of the car, and kills Condit. You heard he was dead. What were your initial feelings? I was just glad it was over. That's all. Honestly, I was glad it was over. I'm glad we did everything we did. We did our job and we did it the best way that we could. Tonight, new details are emerging. We have at this point located a recording that the suspect in this incident made which shed light on Condit's motive. It was a confession. But what I can tell you, having listened to that recording, it is the outcry of a very challenged young man talking about challenges in his personal life that led him to this point. Authorities say that on the recording, Condit described in detail the six bombs he constructed and the seventh device that he detonated on himself this morning. The bombings, which killed two and wounded at least five, began on March 2nd. At 6.55 a.m., 39-year-old Anthony House was killed after picking up a package dropped off at his front door. Just 10 days later, a few miles away from that first bombing... We got two people down. It looks like one in the door entry. Another deadly blast from a planted package. This time, 17-year-old Draylon Mason was killed, his mother critically injured. And his neighbors horrified. I saw an ambulance with my neighbor on, and, you know, on the stretcher. And uh, so that was uh, that, that was very terrifying for me. Five and a half miles away, another explosion. Just a few hours later, another planted bomb critically injuring a 75-year-old woman, Esperanza Herrera. All of a sudden, we just heard an explosion, uh, and I just felt it, like, move the ground. Police evacuated the neighborhood, putting small children on buses. You need help? And alerted everyone not to touch any suspicious packages. We've got a pattern of incidents that have occurred in this community over the past 10 days, and so uh, that we believe are related. Six days later, just a mile away, a fourth bombing and a possible new tactic a bomb rigged to a trip wire. The victims this time were two unsuspecting bicyclists, Will Grote and Colton Mathis. Then yesterday, that fifth bomb detonating in a FedEx facility. Five bombs exploded, but the sixth, an unexploded device recovered from FedEx, turned into a key piece of evidence. Police zeroing in on Condit after catching him on surveillance video trying to mail a package from a shipping center in southwest Austin. Seen here, they say, in an apparent disguise, wearing gloves, investigators then matched these images to his receipts from FedEx, where police say he used the pseudonym Kelly Kilmore. They also found his receipts for the nails, which they say he bought at a Home Depot, and the batteries he used in those devices, which according to KTRK, he bought online. Like any bombing investigation, um, we try to identify all the components, and then we, we break that down um, to where those components are sold, and who would have bought those, and if they bought multiple components. All this led to that pre-dawn encounter with police. Following that, investigators then moved on to Condit's home in Pflugerville, searching for a possible motive and any other active threats. When you go into a bomb maker's location, it gives you a real flavor of how good they really are. What equipment did he have? Was he getting better at this? Because you really want to sort of get inside his bomb making head at this point. Meanwhile, Pflugerville's police and Texas Highway Patrol going door to door, advising residents to evacuate their homes and businesses immediately. I will ask the Pflugerville residents to go to their library or their recreation center, which is open, 
till 9 o'clock tonight if you don't have another place to go to. Authorities ultimately do find bomb making materials inside his house. There is componentry in there that makes us believe, uh, have a high degree of certainty, um, that it is the same components that we have found in all the other devices. Condit's family releasing a statement saying, we are devastated and broken at the news that our family member could be involved in such an awful way. We had no idea of the darkness that Mark must have been in. Right now, our prayers are for those families who have lost loved ones, for those impacted in any way, and for the soul of our Mark. We are grieving and we are in shock. Is it your understanding that he built these bombs before the bombing spree happened or was he doing it sort of based on your investigations to try to stay one step ahead? So it's a little hard, you know, we know when he bought some of the components. We don't know when he bought every single one of the components. So it's hard to say whether he was building them along the way or he built them and, you know, so to speak, had them on the shelf. Investigators say that despite the difference in how the bombs were made, each one provided detailed clues. So to the public, they may have looked different, but uh, when the ATF bomb technicians were able to put those devices back together, the components that were used were very similar. So you actually had ATF technicians piece together physically these bombs after they exploded? Yes, after the second one, um, right. we know exactly what the first two looked like. In three, two, one. Last year, my colleague Pierre Thomas got a rare look at how FBI bomb technicians train police and federal agents on what to look for after a bombing. In this training exercise, the authorities set off a series of car bombs. The investigative premise is that if you hunt for the blown apart pieces at the bomb detonation epicenter, you can essentially find the bomb and piece it back together. Look there. Wires, electrical components, a cell phone. Inside the vehicle, there may be fingerprints or DNA to be collected. Even the screws used as shrapnel may lead to a store where there might be a surveillance camera. That calling card evident in the Austin case. One of the things that was consistent in these devices that there was nails and screws in each one of them. And tonight, questions still swirling about that 23-year-old bomb maker. How a troubled man could turn so violent. For Nightline, I'm Matt Gutman in Austin, Texas. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.